thank you for presentation. I start my talk. Defining what is a long non-coding RNA. Long non-coding RNA are non-coding RNAs that form part of the regulatory RNAs. We can differentiate it from microRNAs by the size and the way of, of action of these genes. Long non-coding RNAs have a many ways to action for generated regulation in genes. They can interact with chromatin, with another a regulatory RNA. For example, in this example, they can capture microRNAs as sponges. They can work as a scaffold for forming protein complex. Or they can interact directly with DNA forming R loops or with promoters for generated regulation. As we see, the long non coins RNAs can have many functions, and these can be seen in the conservation of these genes. They have a different kinds of conservation based in their function. Normally, the long non coins RNA lack of wall transcript con sequence conservation, but we can study another parts of conservation of these long non coins RNAs. Three types of conservation have taken the lead in the study of long non coins RNA. Uh, the first one is centenic conservation that refer the position of the long non coin RNA in the genome or in the neighborhood of genes. Another type of conservation are short sequence motifs. For example, the long non coin RNA that capture microRNAs is very important. And the aim of this talk is conservation of structural elements that refer the ability of folding of the long non coin RNAs, and this structure can have conserved functions. As we see, these, these types of conservation answer uh, interaction of the long non-coin RNAs. Um, the model of a study of this talk is plants. In, in this case, Sarabiops italiana, the model of study in plants. In previous work, we identified around 7,000 of long non-coin RNA in Arabidopsis italiana, using a huge number of transcripts to search long non-coin RNAs in different tissues or developmental stages, and in different experimental conditions. Uh, we can see common, common, uh, common, common numbers of long non coin RNAs in different tissues. For example, is common in, in organisms to have a many or big number of long non coin RNAs in reproductive, in reproductive tissues. In this case, in plants, we have it in the, in the flowers. If we search only the unique expressed long non coin RNAs per tissue or stage, we see the embryo is the, the stage that have big number in, in long non coin RNAs. Uh, in this previous work, we searched the possible function of the long non coin RNAs in Arabidopsis italiana. For this, we use a co-expression networks, are guilty for association approach, and we find a fraction of the long non coin RNAs with possible functions. The first, the principal function that we find in, in question of number of long non-coins RNA that have present was chloroplast organization and photosynthesis. The next one was RNA regulatory and transcription. The first one is, well, I think the most important function in plants, but we only can annotate that the function a, a, a fraction of the long non-coin RNA. In this case, I show an example of long non-coin RNA. I think the, the best long non-coin RNA study in plants. The name of the lo this long non-coin RNA is Couleur. This long non-coin RNA is involved in invernalization process, the regulation of the, of the vernalization in plants, and have uh, evidence of structure conservation and the structure in this long non-coin RNA is functional for this. is a great example for this talk. The structures of RNAs is not an uh, exclusive part of the long non coin RNAs. Many other uh, RNAs have uh, structures, for example, mRNAs, microRNAs, and it's an uh, important part of regulation in, in the rest of the genes. Well, but the principal question is how many, how many long non coin RNAs have a uh, structural conservation in, in plants? For this, the first step is find the orthologous of the long non coin RNAs in different species of plants. For this, we made a genomic alignment, called genome alignment, for find orthologous by position. If you remember in the introduction, the, the position is important part of conservation of long non coin RNAs. With this first step, we find around the 62% of the long non coin RNA conserved in the 
in the family of Brassicaceas. In this slide, in, the to, in this tree, in the top is Arabiops italiana, the model study. In the bottom is the most phylogenetical distal species and the numbers and the percent of long no coin RNA conserved. For searching a structure, we complicated more this method, adding two programs to predict structures using realignment of the sequence, put in this case, searching conserved structures. With these structural alignments, we can generate the models of these structures, called covariance models, and with the data of these models, we can filter the most informative ones. Uh, I know that this methodology is a few complex, but I try to explain it in an example that is the model I, I previously mentioned, that is Kulair. In the, okay, I think I don't have a pointer, but let me try this. Okay, in the top, we have a representation of a genomic alignment of 16 species. The blue bar represents sequence conservation. And we are seeing only a small space of, of the genomic alignment. These boxes represent isoforms of, of genes. The green ones is flowering in locus C, that is the gene that regulated uh, Couleur. They share the position in different directions. And we find in four of the six isoforms of Couleur uh, conserved the structures. The, the alignments of a structure and sequence are represented in these green. In, in these gray bars, and these small arcs of the color are represent the interaction between nucleotides. In the bottom, with uh, color tags, we have the representation of the structures or the model of the structure of this interaction. And this is the way of, we see the conservation in long no coin RNAs. If we compare this, this prediction with the previous work that made the prediction, but in this case, in experimental chemical analysis of color, we see we only see a small fragments of the structures. But remember, we are searching the conservant motifs in 16 species. For, for that, we only concentrated in this, in this uh, small motif, but they, they are represented in, in very important motifs in this, in this gene. Well, but we made this for all the long non coins RNA we annotated and another genes. We, we identified 20, uh, 28,000 of conservator RNA structure between these species. And in the case, we use a different examples for, for comparing the conservation of long coin RNA. We have tRNAs, that the principal function is based in their structures. We see around the 70% of these genes conserved, as uh, same mRNAs, messenger RNAs have many of structure conservated. And in this graph, we have then the percentage of the long coin RNA. This is around 52% of long non coin RNAs have conserved RNA structures. In like a negative control, we use, we use intergenic regions that don't have any of annotation, only for compare, and we see a small fra fraction of, of conservation. The last graphic is only the different types of long non coin RNA that I think is not much important for this talk. And taking again the, the graphic of the position conservation, but this time adding the structural conservation, we see a run of 43% of the long no coins RNA at the bottom of phylogeny have a structural RNA conservation. This means probably the, the structural conservation and the position is very important in the long no coin RNAs. Mm. If we compare this with the previous results, in this case, only take a exclusive long no coins RNA expression. We see the, the many of the long no coins RNA that have structural conservation are present in embryos. We have a high number here. But if we see in percentage, we see another high percentage in different tissues. Probably the, the next step is searching the long no coins RNA and try to infer the possible function of the long no coins RNA. If we see the example of, sorry, the, the the categorical function that previously mentioned, we see the great percentage of the chloroplast or um, photosynthesis long coin RNA have a structural conservation. Probably this means the structure are important in, the, in this function. Indeed, in, in the lab, one of my partners is working in, in long coin RNAs in response to light in plants, but we see another function. 
I think I leave the results in, in this part because the next step is more, more experimental, but we want to generate this data set for try, try to infer the possible function and the conservation of the long coin armies. I, I think I need to say thank you and thank you to, to my lab partner for this work and the head of the group, Selene, for his advisor and do this project possible. If you have questions, I am happy to. Uh, to thank answer. you, Jose. Is there questions are open? Hi. Uh, great talk. Uh, very interesting. My question is more towards um, what are the potential applications of this work? And if these long non coding RNAs, could be used um, maybe in optogenetics, for example. Now that we see that vertical uh, production and plants and stuff, we know that certain wavelengths can impact uh, certain stages of the plant development. Do you think that long coding RNAs can be involved in these processes? Or how, what are your, some of your perspectives? Okay, I think the potential, well, uh, the, the, this initial pro, uh, project was totally exploratory. But we expected to find possible related structures or models of the structure with function, and this gives you the information for, for uh, regulation in genes, and this could be tailored to uh, our crops or another species. And another important part is many of the regulation or the regulation that can affect uh, slightly the phenotypes in any organism normally become in, in sub-regulators, can see, I can say this, but these subregulators can change small things inside the organisms, and normally the evolution work in this way. No, no big changes. Normally, small changes of transcription or something like that that give you new abilities or new opportunities in the organism. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for your talk. I have two questions. Uh, you showed a couple of phylogenetic trees. And I was wondering if that's uh, like the generic phylogenetic tree for your species, or is it generated by your data? It's a, it's a good question. This tree was generated with the world genome alignment. It's the, literally the, the tree of the changes of this comparison of the genomes, but was based in previous phylogenetics of, of this species, because when you made a genomic alignment, you, you compare it to two species at the at the time and you compare it another. For this, you need a reference of, of phylogeny. Okay, uh, my second question is, uh, you told us about how you compare within the same, like uh, it's Prasicas, I think. Yep. And Prasicamine. also between tissues, but I think, uh, and I don't know if you already done this, but it will be interesting if knowing that this conservation is because of like uh, just how the branches go in evolution, or it has more to do with the function of it. So maybe, I don't know if you have compared within tissues of different uh, genders of plants. It's a good question. I think it's something we want to do in the future. We are working in compared with more far species for this. We know, for example, examples in, in important crops in rice. I think rice is the best example. For example, the the numbers of long known coins RNA are, are similar. So I mean, in proportion, for example, the flower normally and pollen and elements of the flower have a great number of long known coin RNA. But the problem in, in these studies is you can search orthologous in, in normal way for that. You can annotate the your long no coins RNA in Arabiops uh, and compare it uh, only using a sequence. For this, we need uh, made a whole genome alignment, but this time including different species. For this, in this moment, we, we don't have that, that data, but we, we try it in the future. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> 